Very good evening. It's 8.30 here in Poland, the 64th. Gordon Bennett, Coop Aaron Ortiz is really been running all through today and the previous days as well. And we've got some breaking news for you. France 1 have landed. Let's take a look. We're joined on the line. France 1, Hervé Papi. Hello, welcome back down to planet Earth. <laughs> Thank you. So, as you can see, we land. We land with uh, more than 15 knots, actually. So it was a bit uh, fast landing. Yes. And especially with not so much ballast. So, but um, it's not the, the the main reason that we land. The main reason, is especially the the military airspace, was closed. And uh, because it's closed, it took, took us so, so much ballast to flew over this airspace or to, to wait for, to, to do some things to, to have some solution to, about this airspace. Yes. And uh, fortunately, we were decided to, to land. And when we come close to the ground, we see that it was um, something like 50 knots. 55-0. And uh, no, one, one five, sorry, one five, right? Uh, calling on the same times now, yes. everyone wants to, to have some news from us, yes. So, we are trying to, to pack the balloon before the night, uh, and we're waiting the, the driver, so probably they will be here tomorrow morning. But at least, this very nice place with a lake with a horse, it looks like a little bit like a Poland. Incredible. So, what, what's your pl what's your plan for tonight? Where, where are you going to stay tonight? Just getting a bit of lag on the uh, signal. The main things at the school. So, what is your plan for tonight? Where will you stay? Bonjour. Sounds like you've got company. I think we might have lost him, but it was great to catch up with the team. They've just landed. Incredible. The uh, father and son combination having to land due to the military airspace. We'll bring you more news from them when we can. That was like two minutes ago, Mark, just before we went live. Yeah, it was really just like, Herve, he's great. He really thinks about the public he thinks about gone mana tv he actually called us and just said hey i have we landed we're good do you want to take an interview and we were like seven minutes before the show and they just said yeah let's do this well right behind me on the table you can see what we are playing for the gordon bennett cup is right there i think we have a shot on it on a different camera can we see that just on the table behind me we can come back to that a little bit later but mark tell me where we are right now and what's happening so yeah, um, as we just heard, um, French one down here has landed. Um, we we currently only have two more teams flying, which is France two and Switzerland two. Um, we see on the leaderboard, France one is currently in the lead with thirteen, just over one thousand three hundred kilometers, and the other two are chasing with uh, one thousand one hundred thirty kilometers and one thousand fifty kilometers. But they are both flying at pretty high speeds with about 50 kilometers per hour. Well, a little bit earlier today, we spoke to FAI Secretary General Marcus Hagene. Two, one. Marcus Hagene joins us on the line, Secretary General of the FAI, good friend of Gordon Bennett, of course. Good afternoon, Marcus. Good afternoon, Regan. Greetings from Lausanne. So what about this race? We all thought it was going to be a, a different type of race, a shorter race. It's not turning out that way at all. Uh, well, as I said the other day, the Gordon Bennett is always full of surprises. And uh, I mean, we have seen similar races where teams went into three different directions. It's exactly the same this year. And uh, I have to say, I didn't expect it to be like this right now, but uh, as I said, it's full of miracles sometimes, but mostly full of uh, passion, uh, commitment, uh, skills, and courage. Yes. Talking of which, we've got 
the trophies are here in the studio. We're going to be talking about these a little bit on our live show tonight. With the uh, Gordon Bennett Trophy and the uh, commemorative trophy for Alan Frankel and John Stuart Jervis. This beautiful mm -hmm. um, crystal balloon. Yeah. Well, these, uh, these uh, reflect on the uh, legacy of the Cooper Aeronautic Gordon Bennett. As we know, it's in place since 1906, but these two trophies are for the uh, winners and uh, for two purposes. Of course, the uh, winning team gets the Gordon Bennett Trophy, but the other trophy uh, commemorating our dear friends, which we lost in the uh, Cooper Aeronautic Gordon Bennett in 1995. Uh, when um, the U.S. team manned by Alan Stewart Jervis and Alan Frankel entered Belarusian airspace and the balloon was shot down by a military aircraft in midair, um, apparently for many reasons, but uh, two sad fatalities we had on the occasion. And this reminds us that uh, freedom in the sky is not coming by chances, uh, it's, a, it's a big thing which we are now achieving and we, we remember these sad days by handing over the trophy to the winning team to not forget our friends and, and to remind all of us that we have to keep on working daily to keep airspace free and friendly and full of peace and... Yes, yes, that's what that we try. That's what we try indeed. So. I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but let's have your predictions for the <laughs> rest of the day, Marcus. Maybe going into ah. a fortnight for some of these people. Oh, oh my dear, you never know. A fortnight is always possible. Um, I think uh, being in the lead and being chased by two teams is 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 a bad position in the right. end. Not from running. People just need to wait and wait and wait until you give up or until your strategy doesn't work out. And then you benefit from the mistakes of the one leading. Right. Uh, the current uh, leading French team has quite a big lead, uh, which is comfortable, but uh, we don't know how many, how much more ballast the other teams have remaining if they go into the fourth night. I think the second and third are psychologically well placed for the reasons I mentioned. But yes. we now need to see where they end up in France. We are approaching the coast, either Atlantic or Mediterranean. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, still challenging weather conditions, nice but fast at that altitude. And we need to see sunset comes in, how much remaining daylight will we have. It's open, completely open, still open at this moment. Yeah, these next few hours could um, make a big difference, could be quite telling on what's going to happen for the rest of the event. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, however, last night was already absolutely stunning to see what happened in southern Germany. I didn't think the balloons would be landing, now I know why, uh, but uh, it was really a close call. 16 really rushing down to the southwestern part of Germany and uh, landing in extremely difficult conditions, some of them three night landings. Mm -hmm. Well done, bravo, bravo. Really uh, it shows you can land a balloon safely at night. Uh, in fact, um, they are equipped to do this, they have maps, they have a lot of material supporting them, but uh, it's still touchy. Well, now we have the three left yes. heading into France. We do indeed. Well, Marcus, I know you're a busy man. Thank you very much for your time and your insights. And um, we'll have a chat when we know the final result. Definitely. Thank you for your time and uh, fun watching what's being put on the screen. Really great. Thank, Thank you, you very man. much. Thank you. Two teams still in the air, Swiss 2 and France 2. But these are the trophies that we are fighting for, Mark. There was a bit of a problem with the tracking of Swiss 2 earlier. Yeah, so um, we currently do have a problem with the, the live tracking on Switzerland 1 and actually also French 2. Switzerland 2. It's Switzerland 2 and also France 2. Um, the batteries are low um, through the, the long flight. Um, we currently don't get points from Switzerland too, but we do have a, a backup tracker that we can access that is, belongs to him itself. So our team now has extra work and we just manually update this. The only downside right now, YB tracking, we, we covered this earlier, was originally done for sailing. Yes. Um, in sailing, you don't care about altitudes. So right. the method for us to manually enter altitude, um, tracking points, we don't have a way to enter altitudes. So for now, you don't see any altitudes on those tracks, but um, yeah, they're both flying and are very well. So it's 70 hours since the takeoff. 
70 hours. Can you imagine? Let's zoom in, Mark, and have a look. I'm going to look at where they are, these two teams, France 2 and Switzerland 2. We do know Switzerland 2 has just got a little bit more speed than France 2, and they're about 70 or 80 kilometers behind them, are they? Is that correct? Yeah, they're a bit behind, but they're, um, as you just said, they're at about 50 kilometers per hour, while France 2 is flying um, at 33 kilometers per hour. Yeah. One thing I know is there's a number of military zones around here. Um, this is also th the reason why Herve had to land. So part of the reason might be that they have to navigate around those zones. Um, they have to go to specific altitudes or do any other means to be able to be allowed to cross those zones. Wow, so we don't even know if they will be allowed to continue. <laughs> It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Well, that's the thing in this race all the time. You need to consider about meteor that you fly into good conditions, yes. but you also have to consider airspace. And, yes. and this, this all plays into the strategies. And the good teams actually have sometimes really ATC people in their teams that are really used to read those maps, to really dig through like all the details. It's not like you plan a, a single flight from A to B. You kind of need to have an overview of, of half of Europe. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Mark. I know you've got a very uh, analytical brain, and I'll give you, I'll ask the question slowly to give you time to think about it. So, here's a scenario: we come back with a live show tomorrow at 10 o'clock, which is 13 and a half hours from now. If these teams kept flying for 13 and a half hours, would they still be in the air, or would they have reached the end of the land? Well, we just said that they are flying at about 50 kilometers per hour. Yes. And I actually, just before this, and you did not even know about this, I was quickly checking the, come on, checking the, the distance. Yes. Um, let's say from Switzerland to, to the coast, that's 770 kilometers. Flying at 15 kilometers per hour, uh, per hour. So you're, they would just be about reaching that part of the coast if they really manage to get here. If they would end up flying here, we are at about 570 kilometers. So yeah, I would, would assume either they try to slow down the flight now or they will probably be about trying to land. But we'll see. So Price of surprises. The question is, do we go with a 10 o'clock show tomorrow morning or do we go with an earlier show tomorrow morning? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a chess game, isn't it? It's a chess game, yes. Um, I would say I would go for the 10 o'clock show to really get the whole update of, of all the things that are happening. Yeah. It will also potentially give us the time to be able to connect with the teams and maybe get some word from them as well. Talking about connecting with the teams, one team we've been trying to connect with for quite a few days is, of course, Poland 2, who made that big run to set the stage for everybody else. We caught them. Let's check it out. One. Poland One, join us. How are you, my friends? Good to see you. Thank you. We are great. We've uh, just been watching, well, looking at some pictures of your landing, the Black Forest on the hill. Looked beautiful, but it was a safe landing at night. Yeah, it was great, great and hard landing because... Uh, it was a short night and our balloon a little bit leaked the hydrogen and we decided uh, uh, going down from 3,500 meters. We had a fantastic uh, uh, drift to southwest part of Europe, probably to end of the France, but we have to land and for safety first, the, yeah. it's number one for us. Incredible run, incredible run. Almost a thousand kilometers out in the front. Everybody was watching. Poland was cheering and spoko, spoko. You were doing so well. Yeah, that, that's that's fantastic. Great, right? fantastic. It was fantastic, fantastic uh, trip. The first night we we was flight uh, completely in all night in the rain. And next night uh, would be all time in the fog or in the clouds. And the last night was crazy. Yeah, that first, well, the second night, flying into that second night with the that wind heading towards the west, there was 
we knew there was a lot of weather and some teams opted to land and we could see that you were going, continuing, going for it. It's a brave decision. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard decision, but uh, it's just a safety first. Safety first, yes, of course. When, when you were launching your takeoff, there was quite a few thousand people singing the Polish national anthem. Could you hear them? Yes, it, it's amazing. Uh, it, we watched that uh, the all of people, the all the spectators, and uh, for us, it's an amazing, amazing time. Yes, yes. Uh, where are you now, Christoph? Are you back at home? No, we we now we in Germany, and we will prepare the postcards for balloon balloon uh, post. Ah, the postcards, our yes. For our friends, and uh, now we will write, write and uh, send to postcards, all post the box for all friends, all the world, because we have uh, hundreds of, of postcards. We, it's, it is our our story. It is our postcards. We prepare to, to our fans. That's that's amazing. Thank you for for all for uh, great, fantastic uh, uh, preparing. Nice. Jordan Bennett team, Poland, then preparing fantastic events. And uh, number one for us is best event, best spectators. And we are just uh, small actors for that uh, academy. Yeah, well, you're, you're the, the, everybody's very proud of you. All of Poland and everybody here in the studio is very proud of what you've achieved. But thank you for joining us. It's good to see you. And we'll see you at the weekend. Blue sky. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Dziękujemy jeszcze raz. It is the oldest FAI air sport. It is the Coupe Aeronautic Gordon Bennett from 1906. And that is the cup which these pilots are fighting for. Into the skies for an adventure beyond many other adventures you can find in any other sport and mark you're going to talk a little bit about the trophies about the cups from the very beginning yeah so um the cup that we see here is um the white one that's the, that's really the running cup and it's actually the tenth cup in the in the trophy you see that on uh, we have a home page which is called legends and history you see yes. that when you you enter all the the different home pages in gordon bennett and you can see all the different trophies from between the years when they were used. And what actually happens is if the same country wins three times in a row, yes. they can keep the trophy and then they donate another trophy. And this is already the 10th trophy in the race. Right. So these are the lists of the companies, of the countries which have won three times in a row. They keep that trophy and then it moves on. Correct. If yeah. they keep the trophy, they donate the new one, and that that one is then running. And the one we have right now is from 2014 because France won it three times in a row before. Wow, incredible! Well, this is it—the final night. However, you look at it, two teams in the sky: Swiss two, France two, flying now as the sun sets here in Poland over France. What will the night bring? Will it bring landings or will the teams continue? Mark, social media, what are people saying? Um, we have um, Don Honey Chase basically saying um, doesn't care about whether it's 10 a.m. AM or earlier. He's still asleep, but I uh, will catch up <laughs> afterwards. Um, there's a, a few comments just saying it, thank you for the show um, from York, from Pieter. Um, some, some cheering to, to friends. France won, and um, let me just quickly check the, the YouTube post. Yeah, that's basically the same, yeah. same content. Well, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m., no matter what happens, and we'll be giving you all the analysis of the overnight events. But for me, producer Mark, researcher Christian, and our great local live stream team, it's a very good night from us here in Poland, and we'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Thank you.